Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is Day 24 of the RPG A Day 2019 Challenge. Today's word is Triumph. It's clear that this word is meant to be used for the kind of war stories of, that would amount to, and that's how I made it to level 4. But instead, I want to use this time to talk about how GMs reward players, and what's the right and wrong ways to do so. The wrong way to do so is one that stems from a romanticized idea of, oh, you need to earn all of it. Which, to be fair, players do need to do. But some GMs take this way too far and put them through way too many struggles, all in the name of said earning. Consequently, you have the other side of the fence, the Monty Hall, where players where players get rewarded way too often, and it makes the reward kind of pointless. But whenever I hear talk of rewarding in this in the sense, it's always in the form of either loot or XP. I think there are certain ways that can be done outside of that. One thing that immediately comes to mind is something that was brought up briefly in the Dungeon Master's Guide 2 for D&D 4th Edition. Yes, I'm talking about 4th Edition again. Deal with it. The alternative reward thing. And to me, it kind of reminded me of some of the technique quest rewards that you might get in Jade Empire. Where you might get a new martial style or a passive technique that was tangentially related or even directly related to the events that happened in that quest as if the story itself was molding itself into a new form of you to kick ass. That's the kind of thing that, I want, that I'd like to see more often in rewards, where the reward is not just simple loot, but has some tangential value. It's also the reason why I've never been fond of D&D's reliance on magical items, because the way I see magical items, a plus blank to attack is not interesting. A plus blank alone is not interesting. A magic item, no matter how mundane, should be treated the same way that certain artifacts are in video games, like the Master Sword comes to mind. Or a, more, a probably more better example would be the Noble Phantasms in the Fate series. Because it's not just that you're wielding Excalibur. You're wielding an embodiment of the story of King Arthur. And that story is going to have its own is going to have its own powers manifest. It is a reflection of said story. I suppose another good example of this would be the God Hand that Heracles has as a berserker. The key is, when you're getting one of these sorts of things, it should be a big damn deal. For those who are more otaku minded, consider how much of a big deal a new technique is made where you get to see the montage of, tr of training and the like to understand that technique and how it reflects their uh, growth. I'm pretty sure you can think of a few examples on that front. But it doesn't always have to be treasure. Sometimes it could be a position. Sometimes it could be a new technique. Sometimes it could be a new spell. Sometimes it could be some secret that is that lies with the plot. The point is, it is important to reward your players, but you shouldn't see your reward as just something immediately tangible. Sometimes that reward is a, should be a little more esoteric. Uh, 